Activa Fest was pretty much kind of smooth then because Francesco did a 12 hour live stream and in that 12 hour live stream I broke my phone. I saw like saw it that I saw it as an avenue that okay, this is something that people globally do. And there's Twitter where I can actually relate to these people. I mean, they write the same HTML I write, they write the same CSS yeah. I write, they write the same JavaScript I write. So yeah, if we can relate on that level, that's something. A lot of people always undermine the power of networking or just the people you know, the connections that you know. Yeah. Because, for example, someone like you, you didn't have to go through the regular, you know, job application, no, right. submitting yeah. resumes, submitting yeah. cover letter, waiting and not hearing back that is unpaid. And you can see that, you yeah. know, you can definitely see a learning progression and exactly. take it. Yeah, yeah, thank you. My name is Esther Adibayo and on my tech journey with Esther, I sit down with tech folks to talk about how they've been able to handle rejections, overcome obstacles in their careers and really cut through the hype from coding mistakes to battling rejections, to balancing work life and even doing phenomenal things. My guests will share everything raw and real on my tech journey with Esther. New episodes drop every week so you don't want to miss out. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of my tech journey with Esther. Today I'm very excited because I have a very special guest with me today. I have someone ha that has been doing really amazing things in the open source field and he also works as a developer advocate at Million JS. So it's none other than Toby Loba at the <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for started. joining me, Toby. Yeah, thank you very much, Esther. I'm excited to be here and um, yeah, glad to share uh, my story and um, talk about literally anything. Uh, <laughs> yeah, cool, cool, cool. Talk nice. About. I'm very excited about this conversation and I'm sure yeah. a lot more people will get lots of insights from everything you share today. Yeah, right, me too. Cool. Excited. Yeah. Yeah. So um, before we jump into the main conversation, I have like a quick question, a fun question to ask you mm -hmm. so i have like a piece of paper here and a piece of paper each one has a question so which would you like to answer pick one <laughs> i'll go right this one right yeah right you're right um, my which right? One is the right yeah but this, this is my, my right hand right. Oh, no, okay oh you want this one, this one. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> okay all right cool. yeah so it's it's a very simple question it's just something mm -hmm. fun let me see okay so it says if you could have a superpower what would it be Oh yeah, I've actually thought about this before and it's glad that, I'm glad we're talking about this now. So <laughs> I think my superpower would be um to be fast. To be fast like flash. Yes. Oh uh, why? Because yeah, because if I if I was fast, I could literally do everything that most people would do and I would do it more even you know, like faster and I could time travel. So I mean mm -hmm. time traveling is the key part. So, yeah, I can like go to the future and then come back and be like, okay, this is a bad decision, don't make it. Let's change the timeline. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. I think for me, I'll probably be like Superman, being able, or Superwoman, Superwoman, <laughs> being able to do anything at anything. all. Like, do anything yeah. at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I think that would be my that would be my super superpower. Do you watch lots of all this Marvel and this? Yeah, stuff? I do. I'm like a superhero, like huge. I just really? don't watch anime. I, I don't watch anime. That's the only thing I don't watch. Well, okay. anything superhero. I watch them. Yeah, a huge superhero fan. Yeah. Nice, don't. nice, nice. Cool. <laughs> okay, so let's get straight into it. Um, I know you've done a lot of things in the open source space, like open source. So you're, when we think about open source, you're one of the people that come first to mind. So, um, yeah, what really impacted you to be involved in open source? What made you interested in open source? Yeah, so my journey to open source wasn't actually like really straightforward. Yeah, so okay. I went to I am um, like uh, during our conversation, most people that are listening might not know. I told you that I'm a Unilag student. So mm -hmm. um, I went to this boot camp on campus. I called it where I trained for three months to do front end. So after that, mm -hmm. we got an internship. Me and, me and a couple of my guys got an internship to do, to work as software engineer interns here at NITOP. So I work here now as like a software engineer, but you know, other work and stuff, I still have to like spend my time in between. Mm -hmm. But when I, have, when I was doing these periods that I sort of like go on Twitter and um. And I started seeing all these amazing people. I mean, I did a couple of hackathons, like just to try to, you know, like exercise, exercise my skills. And I got to discover some of these people and I saw that, oh, they were doing awesome stuff on Twitter. So I was like, okay, Twitter is the place to be. <laughs> so I went onto Twitter, started like making connections, finding people out. 
and I was hearing this open source thing. I think it was Eddie Eddie Jaudi, like if yeah. you know him. Yeah, I started like hearing him talking about this thing called open source because I follow Francesco, and from Francesco's spaces, he always attends, so I always see him around. So then I got to like, okay, let me even see what this thing is about. Then I found out things like React, um, things like Tailwind, things like um, most of the tools I was using were actually open source. And it's like something that is out there and people can contribute to. So I got fascinated and October 1st hype came in. I was in Oct- October-ish. The hype came in. Yeah. I started like hearing about it that you get free swags. So I was like, okay, yeah, let me actually, let me <laughs> actually see what it's idea, about. <laughs> so let me see what it's about. Yeah. So from there I went in and luckily for me, I was in Francesco's community and we were looking for somebody to maintain the website. So I just like volunteered and be like, I was like, yeah, sure. Let me maintain the website for October 1st. And and that was it. And my October first was pretty much kind of smooth then because Francesco did a 12 hour live stream. And in that 12 hour live stream, I got my four PRs merged. So oh, that was nice. pretty, that was like my October first at 2022. And I was like, oh, this is fun. Let me continue doing this. And that was yeah, my journey into open source. That's <laughs> so interesting. Really, really interesting. Yeah. How far back was this? Like, what year was this? Oh, this was last year, um, October okay. 2022, yeah. 2022, oh, interesting, yeah. wow. That means you've made so much progress from last year <laughs> up until this year. And <laughs> I know that it's it's really amazing to see, like, how much you've progressed. And I know that you also spoke at the last CTGS conference that you yeah, spoke on, yeah. like, how to 10 times your growth yeah. with but learning in public. in public. So, yeah. yeah, I wasn't there and I want to hear about how <laughs> building in public. I know you mentioned a bit of this, but has yeah. building in public, learning in public really helped your career? Yeah, so um, so one of the things about me here is that um, I like making connections with people online a lot. And I've been doing mm-hmm. this since way back before my time in tech. Uh, I used to be like a nerd. I'm not sure if I'm still a nerd, child, but I used to like do all this science stuff and, and all these things. Okay. I used to be very active on Quora and answering people's questions, physics stuff, mm-hmm. um, chemistry stuff, biology stuff. So mm-hmm. so that was my niche. I was like, this guy that loved making connections online and doing stuff. And on Quora, I was very popular too, but I just left it. You know, Interesting. I, I just left it for, <laughs> for a while. So then, yeah, so yeah, now coming into like tech and everything, I saw, like, saw, it as, I saw it as an avenue that, okay, this is something that people globally do. And there's Twitter where I can actually relate to these people. I mean, they write the same HTML, right? They write the same CSS, yeah. right? They write the same JavaScript, right? So, yeah, if we can relate on that level, that's something to talk about. Mm-hmm. So from there, I started like, okay, I'm doing this course, uh, or I learned this new thing, or I want to try this new thing. Let me put it on Twitter, and then maybe use it to track my 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 um my progress. So I found mm-hmm. hashtag hundred days of code on Twitter, and I said it was okay. something that people were doing a lot. So I just like basically follow the trend here. Yeah? I started from day one all the way to day 100. Sometimes I even combined mm-hmm. this, maybe if I had, had bad internet connectivity, but I still did some things. So I just be like day 20, 21, and 22. This was why I did, so I list it out. So yeah, from there, I started like picking up pace. I joined communities, started open source, and every of these things that I'm talking about with you now, I put on Twitter. So sometimes I still go back to look at some of these old tweets to see how I was able to like, um, Go. I remember the time I was struggling with Postman. I, I laugh at it now, but, <laughs> but yeah, I was actually struggling with Postman at some point in my in, in this journey. So yeah, I, I, I know these things is like a, like a diary for me. I can make it a book exactly, sometime yeah. in the future because I've documented my progress and I've seen how I was able to overcome some things. Sometimes I write my solutions to things and be like, okay, this was where I was able to solve this under the tweet. So that is then in public in general. And along the way, I made friends, made connections, joined communities, and all of these things in in like shorts is what um, sort of helped me um, to grow in, in several aspects and also even to get a job because it was mostly through networking that somebody referred me for a room. It was like, okay. it was like straightforward and stuff like that. Mm. So, so yeah, that's, that's like um, how I would put what learning in public and what the talk was about mostly. It was around this, these things that I did and stuff. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's really good. Cause I, you just mentioned that putting stuff out there is like a, a diary for yourself. So mm-hmm. you check it like three months down the line, six months down yeah. the line, you can easily yeah. track your progress and see yeah. how much you've grown. So it's very yeah. useful. I'm sure yeah. like, I always realize that many people are learning in quiet and even when opportunities yeah. come, people do not yeah. really know how good you are till you put it out there, whatever yeah. you learn. It, people just have that perception that, okay, this person exactly. is doing something great. Exactly. But if you're not putting it out there and it's just in your quiet space, no one exactly. really knows. No one actually, yeah, know. yeah exactly. Exactly. That, okay. That's the point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the point. Exactly. Um, 
you also mentioned that you're a student, you're studying yeah. computer science in Unilag Univers University of Lagos. Um, yeah. So, and you're also doing really amazing things. So, have mm -hmm. you been able to combine school? I know computer science is not exactly a, an easy course to study in school. No, it's not. So, it's how not. do you combine the two and still, you know, do so well? Yeah, so the thing is, um, yeah, and, and that's the good part of these things. Um, make friends with smart people and make sure that people you are doing things with are actually putting yours in the same course as you or something. I think mm -hmm. these are the two things that strategically placed me to be in the right sports. Um, okay. Obviously, I'm, I'm not like the best student in the class, but I have smart friends and I have people that are my colleagues as well that mm -hmm. also do computer science with me that are in the same class as me. So when it comes to time to actually like set a couple of hours aside to read, um, I go to the three hours to write, like as okay. I am now, I'm supposed to go to the theater like maybe tomorrow. Me and a couple of guys study for like a bunch of hours. So I do all these things, um, studying uh, things like data structures and algorithms. I already learned them from doing tech stuff. My guys, we do all those things like that. Uh, other computer science concepts we learn because we have this notion of not making ourselves be normal software developers. So me and my friends always do some of these computer science things that we eventually still do in class um, already as like an industrial thing, just try to improve ourselves as software engineers. And the rest we actually learn from class because computer science is very theoretical. So you still need to learn and read books actually because some lectures are very... Um... <laughs> <laughs> let me just leave, let me leave it that way. Your so lecturer need... is going to watch this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so some lecturers, some lecturers are actually very, um, yeah, like strict and stuff. So you need to attend some, you need to attend classes and so you also need to like, you know, read and prepare for tests, impromptu tests and all these things. So all these things, I still combine it in a way. My work, they know I'm a student, so they have mm -hmm. the time I, I set aside. My work for open source is like natural already, so I can do it from anywhere. I can literally be on GitHub on my phone and be like, oh yeah, let me check out what's going on here. And so it just sort of like blends into my lifestyle, I guess. That's that's the way I mostly do it. And I still hang out mm -hmm. with friends. That's so good. Um, you yeah. mentioned data science. I mean, you mentioned algorithms, data structures, and all of that. Yeah. I know when I was in boot camp, those are like the concepts that I struggled with. I didn't come from a computer science background, but oh. I was always running away from, oh my gosh, I was like, <laughs> that point when they were teaching us data algorithms yeah. and data structures, oh my yeah, God, yeah. I, I was almost quitting my boot camp because I was like, what, what the heck is this? <laughs> It's all of us to understand these things, and then go on lead code and all those coding yeah. challenges that they're giving you. Yeah. You just be like, "God, how?" But, yeah. Well, I I haven't honestly gone back to all those concepts. My own, I'm just mm -hmm. focused on my front end engineering. But <laughs> I can see yeah. how you know computer science concepts. Like if I study computer science, it can really help mm -hmm. you. You know, when yeah. you're becoming a software engineer, or like yeah. the way you think and solve problems. It will be different. Yeah, exactly. To, exactly. You're already used to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. You also talked about how someone referred you was for your first job. Was that particularly your first job? Like, how exactly did you get that first job? Oh, so yeah, my first job was um as at January or January ish. I didn't have a job. I was mostly doing stuff here at Nitob. I used to teach. I teach front end. Okay. Um. Uh, yeah, I've like stopped for a bit because um. Like you know, other things. I'm trying to like balance everything. So I was like, oh no, let me not break myself. Let me just focus on these things mm -hmm. because I know I can't like I can only stretch so far. I have a threshold that will break that. So yeah, instead of like getting to that point, so I had to like drop some things. So now the way I got my first throw was like a referral. Literally, I was watching Netflix. I watch Netflix a lot. That's how I chill. So he just called me up and I was like, um, yeah, um, tell me, do you know TypeScript? And I was like, yeah, sure, I know TypeScript. And then like in like a couple of in like 20 minutes, he was like, yeah, like, get ready. Um, there's a meeting holding right now in the company and I want to refer and um, they're they are like interviewing candidates Who and stuff. How old you? He was like, um, he, he's like a mentor to me. His name is Dario. Okay. He's like a mentor to okay. me. So he just like, just like called me up and I was like, yeah, sure. And he hooked me up with the guy at the company that is supposed to link me up with the interview. I see like a connection with a connection. Um, with yeah. Another. yeah, exactly. So I just like quickly ran and I didn't even take my part because that day I was like, okay, let me chill throughout today. So I just mm -hmm. ran to um, the workspace. I was quiet and I had the meeting and I was like, um, yeah, they were mostly asking me React stuff that I saw as easy. So yeah, I was like, okay, yeah, sure, sure. And, and all these things. So 
and then I talked about my work in open source with them and the front, the front end lead there was like super, he was like excited. And I was like, wow, I think I was already doing work for a million there. So I just like told him about a million and stuff. So he was like excited. Like, okay. Yeah. We need to get this guy. And like, it was a contract job though, because, because the way they were looking for somebody to work, um, with them because they were like on mm-hmm. a sprint and, uh, they were trying to like deliver something. So they needed a contract front end guy to help them out. So, and then like maybe one hour after the meeting, I just got a call from the um, PM and IR manager. And they were like, yeah, we would like to go forward with hiring you. Interesting. Wow. That's that was so pretty much. They didn't, they didn't ask for my CV. They didn't ask for my CV. They didn't ask for anything. They literally just like interviewed me and stuff. And, and it was just a conversation. And I was interested in products because it's something I'm, I love. They do music stuff, music streaming, live streaming. So there okay. were things that I, w- I already was like, okay, this is very nice. Family, I love this. Yeah. Yeah. So from there, um, yeah, I did the contract for them. It was a week's contract. Um, I got paid at the end. Uh, they like they loved my work, so they were like, "Yeah, we'd like to offer you a full time role." And yeah, that was that was. It. Oh, so are you working full time with them now? Yeah, I work full time with them wow. now. That's that's really that's really <laughs> inspiring. Uh, Thank I, you. I, I, like I feel like a lot of people always undermine the power of networking or just the people you know, the connections that you know. Yeah. Because, for example, someone like you, you didn't have to go through the regular. You know, job applications, no, submitting no. resumes, submitting yeah. cover letter, waiting and not hearing back all of those nonsense <laughs> job <laughs> application processes because those things can be very frustrating, you know, yeah, just applying, yeah. not hearing back and all of that. Mm-hmm. But for you, it was the network you had, the person, mm-hmm. and obviously because you had also been learning in public, people yeah, could exactly. see that this person exactly. is actually good. good. Exactly, yeah. and mm. it just helped you. You didn't have to go through all those unnecessary interview steps that you yeah. see you interview four <laughs> stages, and you would just be you would just be frustrated. So that's like yeah. connecting with the right people, networking, yeah. and just putting yourself out there would really go a long way in helping exactly. people or helping you get a job. Exactly, and and after I actually started like working with them, I actually discovered that some of the things that I have built. Or that I even do naturally doing open source work actually came in handy. Things like mm-hmm. using Git, using GitHub, things like um, being able to ask questions when you need to ask questions. Because because when people get given tasks at times, they will they already start like thinking, okay, how do I do? How do I like write the code and stuff? For example, if you are working in open source or are building something like a tooling that mm-hmm. you are that people are actively using in production and you are g- expecting feedback, there there is a way you interact with people and be like, okay. Um, okay, what are the things? What are your requirements? You try to like table down and break things down, and the way you approach things are different because you don't yeah. think like a coder, you think like, um, how do I put this? Like somebody that wants to solve a problem or something yeah, like that. Like an yeah, kind of engineer. O- <laughs> yeah, open source, open source builds that, um, mm-hmm. builds that like, um, how would I put this? Build that personality into you, like, and you know, things like Git and GitHub for free just yeah. in open source. Yeah. yeah, true. You know, already know all those tools. You know how to work yeah. all those tools. Yeah, yeah so, exactly. Uh, let's let's backtrack. I'm interested in actually knowing what's prompted you to even be in tech and oh, okay. study computer science. Like, <laughs> was there anyone? Is it from when you were small or younger that you felt like, okay, I want to be an engineer? Or mm-hmm. a lot of people growing up. We've all been taught that resumes and cover letters are the keys to landing a job. But I'm here to tell you that there's a far more powerful tool that hiring managers are actually paying attention to. Ready to hear it? It's called your portfolio site. That's right. While everyone else is tweaking fonts on their resume, your developer portfolio is how you can wow recruiters. It shows off your creativity and skills in a way that no boring resume could ever. But building a polished portfolio from scratch takes forever right? Wrong. I've created the ultimate portfolio site template that does all the heavy lifting for you built with Next.js pages and Chakra UI. This portfolio site immediately introduces you to potential employers, highlighting your career achievements, gives them quick links to contact you and check out all your socials and GitHub. All you need to do is make tweaks and deploy and then you're good to go. Access the code for this portfolio site by visiting the freelancehq.com slash get my portfolio even me i i remember when i was very small i don't know why i felt like bankers are the ones that had the money but i, was like, oh, I want to be something i want to be a banker i want to be a banker so was yeah. it the same for you like what exactly did you want to be growing up and what prompted you to come to the software engineering field 
Oh, so with me and software engineering, we had like um, no sort of connection or any inspiration because I grew up in a place called Ikotun in Lagos here. Mm-hmm. And in Ikotun, Ikotun is like a suburb slash ghetto area-ish. So I grew up there, spent my um, um, secondary school, primary school, uh, my primary school, sorry, primary, then secondary, then, um, mm-hmm. then I wrote my jump and stuff. So I, as I, like I said, I used to be like a, like a nerd and stuff. So I spent a lot of time um you know with books of my uncles and aunties because i grew up with my grandparents so they had like their books there when maybe because they also schooled there so they left some of their books around in the house so i would like be playing i had no friends literally it was just me and my grandparents and so i would, like be reading books and uh you know like yeah, like trying to like i was always curious you know trying to like uh, go around the house and scattering things and say okay what is here what is here and, and my dad my dad actually did buy me a pc so he bought me a PC like this, um, cathode ray two PC with Windows XP, and uh, mm-hmm. I had like I this, them. I had like this janky UPS. So then I would like <laughs> be playing with Encarta kids and my and oh yeah, uh, I remember. and then and then there's this um there's this one my my Vis Beacon. Yeah, I used to like play around with all those things like learning to type uh, words per minute, all those things. Mm-hmm. So those are the things I did like mostly on this PC. I didn't even know there was something called coding. Maybe I would have been a senior software engineer. Now. <laughs> but, <laughs> Well, yeah, I spend a lot of time with Windows that, like, now I can use Windows like the back of my hand. So I know Windows a lot. Like, nice. from Windows XP to 7 to 10 to using 11. I don't use Windows. Like, I haven't used Windows in a while. But, but yeah, like, saying these things uh, actually did build that technical part of me where I was able to, like, use computers very well. But I still wasn't um, uh, exposed to anything called software engineering. But I knew there was something called coding. Even mm-hmm. applications on my phone that I got or websites i never even thought okay there could be actually something that builds this website it, it didn't occur to me so my exposure came when i came to the university and i saw and i think it was after corona when i came back okay. i saw that okay there were these people in my class that they call themselves um uh, front end back end so like okay what are, what are you guys doing so i tried to like meet one of the guys that were my friend because before before um, corona he was a normal guy in class but like after i saw that okay he was actually like using um actually like okay he said he's always writing code and building websites and so okay i was like okay how do you yeah okay i, I was like curious and i was asking him like you're telling me that this code you've written here with all these uh just squiggly lines and everything is what's translating to this beautiful website so he was like yes like he even sent me a link i was like oh wow this is very nice are you sure it's this code that is running on my <laughs> <laughs> so he's like so he's like yes yes so i was like okay how could i how can i learn this thing then he gave me a couple of links on youtube I didn't really get it because I wasn't, it wasn't in my thing. So it didn't make sense to me that I could write text to become code. So Nitop launched a book camp um, during the eight-month strike that we went on. So I was like, okay, I have to use this strike for something. So that was when I just um, signed up. And I used to come from Ogun State um, to Lagos wow. State. I used to show to like every day. I think I was paying like 3K Naira per day. Wow. That's, and- that's a lot of determination. Yeah, they yeah, I would like leave home by like four. My dad used to live very early to come to Lagos, too, so I would, we would leave together by four a.m. in 4 the morning. Four a.m. Yeah, in the morning, and then I would get back. I used to get here before literally everybody that lives around. So this is Akoka. I'm coming from Ogbu State, and I used to be the first to arrive here every day, every single day. So, so then I would go. I would get home by like eleven p.m. ish. I am returning up. the next day. Yeah. So I did that like so it was like three times a week. Sometimes I would even like tell them at them that we have something to do. Um. Um, at, at, yeah, at NITO, I used to say at NITO, but sometimes it was just me finding a way to get out of the house so I can come and use Wi Fi, maybe download and practice videos. and do something Ex- useful. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, and I did that for like, for like 12 weeks. There were times when there was not even enough money for me to actually get food. So I would like go hungry mm-hmm. from morning, then I come back at night, then I actually eat food at home. So, yeah, I was just going through all these things and, you know, yeah, that, that was pretty much the process. <laughs> then, wow. and, yeah. That's a lot. A lot of people don't see this behind the scenes. They just see Toby. <laughs> they don't see that background story that, you know, everything that you had to go through, the sacrifices that you had to make. So it's really inspiring. Um, yeah. yeah it's, it's it's so inspiring. And now you're working as a developer advocate at Minionjus as well. Yeah. So yeah, okay, let's, let's, let's talk about Minionjus. I know right. you're very passionate about what they do and you know, the product <laughs> is also very good. So for yeah. me, I work as a developer advocate as well. And a lot of times when people say, people that are non-techie, when they ask, what do you do? 
I just tell them I'm a software engineer or I'm a front <laughs> engineer because, because even my parents, it took them a, a while to really understand. Even sometimes they're still like, what do you do? What exactly, what did you do today? So for you, how do you explain like what you do as a developer advocate to someone that doesn't even have an idea? Yeah, so with my grandparents, it might be a trouble because I haven't actually told them what I do. But I send them money every I send them yeah, money. Yeah, the money part is the exciting part for them. I send them money every every end of the month and they just call to pray and I don't yeah. even, we never actually discussed what I do. My 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 dad has an idea because he's tech inclined. So okay. he knows so he knows some of these things. But but the developer advocacy is something that he doesn't really get, but he kind of gets because he's as I said, he's tech inclined. But my mom, we were actually ever discussed it. She just knows I hang out with a lot of um, foreign people. Like I don't want to use um, any other words. Here. So yeah. she just hang out with a lot of foreign people, and I have fr- friends abroad, and I also write code at times. But she doesn't really know. Not we, we don't talk about that part. Thing that you do. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. so that, that's that's the way I like explain to them. I just tell them that okay, I build websites or applications that are yeah, there. They understand applications because they have forms. Mm-hmm. And they use all these smartphones, so yeah, it's like, okay, yeah, okay, it makes sense, <laughs> makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. You build websites. Maybe that's why I'll say, so I won't say software engineer, because software engineer may never make sense to some people. I'll just <laughs> tell them I build websites, web applications. Yeah, that's yeah. good. And um, we also mentioned that your role at Million GS is an unpaid role. So yeah, it um, is. I know that working for a company that and you know you are you are doing so much work doing excellent work and mm-hmm. it's unpaid like there's no financial rewards at least at mm-hmm. that point it's not mm-hmm. easy it requires a certain level of motivation for you to keep yeah, it doing your best so what yeah, motivates you to you know do this so like i as I, like I said um open source is something that really resonates with me and vibes with me because it's something that i see as um uh, okay you are doing something and you're building stuff that you can actually ship to people all over the world. Like people from Australia, as far as it is, can be using my work. Okay, 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 I like this. So that was one of the reasons that, like, that motivates me to do, that motivates me to do open source work. But for Million, I think it's more or less about like um, technology, yeah? So okay. performance is something that I've always like, um, been, um, been curious about. So I've used um, applications in the past, even when I was like a child using all some of these applications, my laptop always freezes. I try to load things like so hard to load and all those things. So performance is something that I, I maybe I don't think about, but it's something that I like, okay, why is this thing slow? So I think that ideology that I have as a person is something that sort of like ties into what Million does. So Million does performance optimization. Mm-hmm. And that is something that, okay, this is something I'm actually, I don't know, it, just, it was just in it. When I saw the technology, I was like, okay, this is something that I, I really like, like, wow, this is amazing. And I get to be able to use this because I'm a React developer and, and I do front end. So, so it makes sense to me that, okay, now I can, now I should, if I add something like this where I can educate developers on having to think about performance in their workflow, not making it an afterthought. Maybe you build the application, they are now thinking, okay, how will somebody on a small phone that um, is using a small or a, a Chromebook or something very tiny, load the website at the same speed. You're using a MacBook, you might not notice it because um, you're trying to like, okay, uh, you just build your own website, you test in dev, yeah, uh, it does improve. It's good, but somebody might be on a low low end device, and they're trying to use the same things and access. It. That's like an accessibility problem because they cannot access the website because the performance of your application is is might be good, maybe on some the devices, but on low end devices and devices that with poor connections and all those things, mm-hmm. you know, the rendering is slow, the experience is bad, and all those things. So, yeah, so that is what motivates me to actually do what I do a million. And then there's always the um the um the occasional feedback and uh, the occasional bug reports, and then the thanks from people that okay, I thank you for this. I use this in my uh, for a client and improve customers by this. They show me lighthouse calls and all these things. So we see it on the um, server every day. So all these things come like motivate me. So I don't think about the money that much and all these things because uh, it's just money is like a consequence if you think about it in the end. If you do really good work, money is like a consequence that happens come, to you. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So yeah, I, I, that's why I think about it. Hmm. What you said is so useful because I can totally relate. I remember when I was also working as a developer advocate at Chakra UI, for example, Mm -hmm. I really liked the product for me, like building UIs, you know, using style props. And it was also unpaid for a long time. And, you know, Mm -hmm. this, I, I really learned a lot on 
the job. Yeah, you, know? you would. It was it was Chakra UI that really gave me my first video making experience because wow. I had to make videos for Chakra UI. I organized wow. hackathons for Chakra UI. So all of that experience mm -hmm. has now helped me get my first paid developer advocate role. So wow. um, I think a lot of people just maybe neglect, you know, just yeah, focus on the opportunities. Money. Exactly. They yeah. focus on money and they neglect opportunities that are yeah. not paid. Yeah. So yeah. and the you know, talking to opportunities you. actually yeah, I mean, give you yeah. larger, you know, yeah. larger platforms for you to now exactly. get all the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it requires like a certain level of like um thinking uh, from a different perspective, you know. Um yeah, sure. like yeah, you're right. Like, but there are circumstances that also make people think about money as well. But yeah, times, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Like, you can make. I could do that because I already had some money and yeah. I was also comfortable to some extent. But definitely, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. circumstances could make people. But it's just important to know that if you have an opportunity that is unpaid and you can see that, you yeah, know, you can definitely see a learning progression and exactly. take it. Yeah. Yeah. Take it. Exactly. So um yeah. gradually wrapping up now, but I know you mentioned that last year was like your first October first event mm -hmm. where you yeah. you know you like what's the word? I can't remember, I, but you I, contributed I, to open yeah. source. Uh, yeah. yeah. So um what has been what has been some of the challenges that you faced as whether coding challenges that you faced? or even learning or even on the job have you ever had to struggle with imposter syndrome where people sort of expect you to know something and like you don't know so how exactly do you deal with things like that yeah imposter, imposter syndrome happens to me so much and and i uh but for me i don't i don't think that deeply about it because uh, it happened to me so much for a certain period of my life where i spent so much time on tutorials i mean i, I think i said in that <laughs> comment where Okay, let, let's win with the seven hour one that I told you. Yeah. I've, I've sat through a 16 hour, a 16, um, playlist video before. Like I literally sat down and I finished a playlist of 16 videos wow. in one sitting. So, so wow. I mean, or what, what were you learning? I was learning Firebase, but then what I was learning from the video was actually Firebase 8. So it turns out that after I finished watching all the videos, mm -hmm. there was already Firebase 9. So the syntax has changed. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that was like but I, but I was still able to like okay maybe i eventually went back to the docs to go and read the docs and try to change things okay this is the new syntax this is the new way you use it and all those things so yeah those were some of the things that i went through and that um in a way though i did learn some things from some tutorials but some things i now looking back i feel like i could have actually learned in through another means or maybe by like trying stuff but at times when i face imposter syndrome maybe while doing something maybe i get stuck because when you get stuck is when you actually start mm -hmm. thinking about all these things. So yeah. in those times, I always, I always simply ask for help because I know I'm not the best. Obviously, they are like developers are like two thousand times better than me out there, and they're maybe a hundred times better than me. They're maybe ten times better than me. So think of that progression. They're maybe are two times better than you as well. So mm -hmm. just reach out and, and ask for help. And you people that are also better than, better than <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So yeah. So just reach out for help and be like, okay, um, sorry, I'm trying to do this. Thing. I have mentors. Like I have this um. Mentor, her name is Esther. She's a very she's a senior front end engineer. So she at times I like jump on calls with her because she, we don't like I think she stays on the island. So I like we reach out to her, like, okay, please, I need to implement this thing. I'm trying to get this thing. So she's like, okay, be okay, okay, sure. Let me jump on the call with you and show you how to do this thing. So yeah. I reach out to people like that. My friend, my roommate too, is also yeah, a developer, he's also good. So I reach out to him and show him some things that like, okay, help me check this thing out. So asking for help doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you it only makes you stronger because in the end, when you are done, you know that thing. And then somebody else can come to you for help and you're already like, okay, I know this stuff. And then you still face more challenges. Challenges are normal. It's like in the job description of what we do in tech, you need to face challenges because what <laughs> will you be doing in tech if you are chilling? If you're, so, if you're chilling, if you're not fixing boards. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Like, ask mm -hmm. for help. Don't ever get shy. Even if it's a stupid question, it's a silly question. Yeah. It's, still ask. The worst is that yeah, people exactly. would laugh at you, but you eventually get answers to that question. Exactly. I remember 
in my first, like my early days of, you know, learning, I, I used to feel scared of just asking questions. So I'm like, <laughs> I don't want someone to feel like, oh, I'm dull or I'm daft or all of those, you know, so many thoughts are just going through your mind. Yeah. Especially when you feel that this is supposed to be a simple thing. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's important to also have people around that you can always mm, reach out to. Exactly. Ask questions. Joining yeah. communities and stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Communities yeah. are so important. So you don't feel alone. They kind of yeah. give you sense of belonging and everyone you realize that that question you're about to ask is in the mind of five other people you're exactly. just the boldest person exactly. and then you ask people like hey, hey i don't exactly. understand exactly exactly yeah yeah okay cool yeah. so always yeah. ask questions so um yeah now you, what level are you in school oh i'm in 300 now Okay, nice. And mm. computer science four, five years, five years, I think. It's five years, yeah, five yeah. years. Yeah. So, um, mm. how do you envision like your career progression in the next two or three years? Leaving school, do you have like some plans already in mind? If you don't so, mind sharing at least one or two, I know you may want to keep some <laughs> secret, but if you don't mind sharing like one or two. Yeah. So for me, I think about um. The ecosystem and i see what happens in the ecosystem of tech in nigeria to be specific and i see that um we have a lot of consumer developers and we don't have builder developers mm -hmm. because because like if you think about for example chakra ui is like a very good ex um exception of something that is different because that came from a nigerian and people all over the world are using it but most of the other yeah. people who have the ecosystem are people that okay they only want to use 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 so you want to npm in story i've got to react to delete their code base tomorrow what happens and all those things view. <laughs> so, exactly so, so exactly all those things so i'm I'm thinking in that direction but then there's also the thing of like chasing fang and um fortune 500 companies um that, that is also good though but it's not really my it's not really ideal the ideal thing i want to do in tech what i want to do in tech is work in open source do indie mm -hmm. acting um building in public these are some of the things that i see as um my own path in tech because I want to be like building stuff and use and like shipping stuff out that people all over the world use. That is my what I see as my ideal progression. Um being in tech. Um you can do a nine to five job, yeah, that's also good and you make money monthly, but you can actually still do these things and still make more money or make yeah. more name for yourself. And these companies I want to hire you that you were going to apply for would actually be calling you to come and integrate your their technologies. I mean your technology in their companies. So yeah, I think that is what I see as um, how I want to go about uh, in like this tech part. And I think it's something that um, we should build more in the minds of people that are coming to tech or people that are in tech or people that um, work in tech in, in the ecosystem. In Nigeria. Instead of us shipping our developers out, out, why don't we build a community around the where we have builders that also ship products instead of shipping developers in the, from the ecosystem. Yeah yeah so oh, that's so good that's so mm -hmm. good um, yeah. and the uh, final question what's one advice that you would give to anyone looking to start their tech journey and like what would you say they should be doing uh so if you are looking to start your tech journey i would advise uh two things um pick a pick a niche pick a niche that if somebody wakes you up from sleep with a slap and they ask you a question <laughs> that okay do you know this stuff do this stuff for me in two, in two minutes. You'll be like, okay, I can I can get it done for you in five minutes. And then that five minutes, you'll finish it maybe before three minutes. That is what you should be thinking about in tech. Um, in tech, when you start out as a beginner, there are so many resources, so many parts. You might think of yeah. game, right? Like, okay, I like game development. I want to go around up. You can learn C++ and you find out, okay, it's too hard or maybe it's not your thing. You say, it. some people say it's not their thing when in reality, it's probably just hard and they can feel like they can't get over it or the community is not there to pack them. But there's no support sure. as well. So. But I think for, for me, uh, what I would advise is pick a part. I know that, okay, this is why I want to do I love this. And these are the reasons why I think this would be something that aligns with me as a person. Stick to it because challenges will come and you'll have to overcome them. It's, it's just natural. It's part of the process. Mm -hmm. And don't feel down. Just like, okay, just be like, okay, I can do this. Um, reach out and be in a community that are more of people that do the same thing that you do. So that when you face challenges, you can face them head on together. They can help you out. You can reach out to seniors together and be like, okay, we face this thing. We are like trying to resolve this it's part of the journey that you still use to grow as an engineer and then in the end make connections go to events um make connections online make sure you know people because your network will be your network is your network in the end because the more people you know the access to things to things that you would have eventually and you know it's, it's different yeah because we have connection 
to a person in a place that person can obviously help you out be like okay yeah, yeah i know this person obviously i can help you out mm-hmm. and all these things so yeah build your connection build your skills so that when opportunities come your skills will not be a barrier for those opportunities that's that's what i would mm-hmm. advise nice really <laughs> nice and sound advice thank you yeah, so thank much you. toby um congratulations yeah. on everything you've achieved i'm really looking forward to seeing you know your journey unfold and wishing thank you all you. the very best yeah thank you. i really thank enjoyed you. this conversation thank you again for joining me and i'm sure a lot of people have learned so much from everything you've shared so till yeah, next sure. time everyone and see you in another episode bye <laughs>